Hello, uh, this evening we're coming to you from uh, Curley's Bar in Clare Street, Ballyhonus, and I'm here with Anne Curley, the proprietor, and uh, I suppose this is the middle of July, Anne, really. Normally we'd be sitting inside the pub having a jar or two this time of the year, and uh, we're not doing it this year. No, well hopefully in the next week or two that we hope to get back into business. Uh, it has been a tough 14, 16 months. We actually didn't think it would last this long, but it looks like it, but hopefully all going well. We're waiting on rulings from government to let us know when we will be opened. But saying that, I have to say that in the last 16 months, I've enjoyed some of it. But I'm also looking forward to going back to work because, uh, as I say, I enjoyed it. I spent more time with my family now than I have ever done because when we are in business, we'd have been cut. We'd, if we were in business, I would have been um, inside the pub and you wouldn't get as much chance to spend with my mother especially. And, but hopefully we'll be back in, sitting inside on high stools. I know, but the funny thing is, like, I, I see you there, you enjoyed the banter as people are passing by and cars are passing by. Like, if you were two minutes with Anne Curley, anywhere remotely near the pub or around the town, and of course, then there's the news. Like, where would you be without the news? Like, the local bar in rural Ireland, that's where you find out what's going on, isn't it? Yes, there's, there is, it is a great, as I say, it's a great university. You learn more as a bar counter, I reckon, than you would anywhere else or in college or like that, which you do. It is good. Like the top about the locally here, you have the Western, you have the Connacht, you have the, you have the uh, Mayo News, you have the Common Herald, and of course the Farmers Journal, the Daily Papers. But if you want to really know what's going on... You come to the local pub. Yeah. You come to the local pub, you'll hear a lot of what's going on then. Yeah. No. And uh, I suppose, like, you have no juicy stories that you can tell us from, from the past. Or, I know what sta- <laughs> happens in the pub what's stays inside, in the pub. What's that happens in doors stays in doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll leave that inside. Okay. <laughs> Well, we won't, we won't, we won't, let, we won't divulge anything from the pub. Okay. Well, they always, I always remember my father always said, it was, he said, what happens in the pub stays in the pub and yeah. doesn't come into the kitchen even. Yeah, yeah. And would you be the one now that would say, if I came looking for the missus now and asked, was she in, would you be one of those that would uh, have a, an answer ready for, you know, or a spot in the back where she could hide, you know? If someone came looking, I'd say, well, they're not here at the moment. <laughs> they'll come, maybe come back. Or someone might come in and say, is the boss here? I said no, but the boss might be here tomorrow. <laughs> I don't have one. Don't have one. Don't give too much out to them. <laughs> Especially if it's someone you're lucky that, that, that you don't want to see. <laughs> I suppose uh, the other side of it is on, on your side of the counter. Do you find sometimes you become nearly a bit of a counselor that, that you know people come in to get to know you get to know your customer. They'll tell you things maybe, and you get to oh, maybe... they will tell you things and you don't repeat. They might tell you something that yeah. they might tell someone else. Yeah. But they'll know now yeah. what's left here will still be left here, and they'll know that it won't pass here. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's and that's what pub business is about. And the local, the local trade is a great thing too. And you know all your clients, clientele, and they are, they are great. They are, and I mean, I'd say the Fields of Valley Hunts are fantastic. I the other thing I, I just crossed my mind now is, we'd say, and it's an unfair question for you, but if the pub hadn't been here, uh, or if you hadn't taken up this line of uh, livelihood, is what else are you interested in? Or is there anything else you would have done if, if you weren't in the pub? Oh, God, I don't know. Because, um, as I said, I was brought up in the pub. Yep. I was in the pub all my life. And I don't think an office job or anything like that would be my... Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I enjoy the pub, I have to say. It's, yeah. I really, really love the pub trade. Yeah. Yeah, and I, as I said, you have, I have missed this. Of course I've missed I've missed all the customers, the company, the banter, the sport, the lot. But I think... I was built for the pub. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of the, the six of us in the family, and they'll all say, I was built, you're the one that was built yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah. And you have to, I also, you have to either like the pub business or you don't like the oh, pub yeah. business. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's a tough life. It's a vocation, but yeah. it's a tough life too. Yeah, yeah. The hours are long, and you have to have that smile in the face all the time. I know, time. I know, I know. Yeah. And a customer might come in, the best in the world, and if you find some, he can be changed Oh, yeah, which that's in level, yeah. you can get that in any... You know how to, to judge know. that You know in, how to, of course you do, yeah. Yeah, of course you do, you do, yeah, yeah. And then besides the pub, do you do anything else outside of the pub for your own personal I, I do, I, I do, I walk a lot, I do a bit of cycling, and I've played a lot of golf. Now, I haven't played much in the last year, but I love the, I just love the golf. Okay. And I hope they will go back to it again. But I do a lot of walking now, and cycling. 
When yeah. you talk about the golf club, like, isn't there? It's just one of so many organisations. So it's a lot. We, which we are very lucky. We have a lot yeah. of great organisations yeah. in the town. We have the GA. We have the rugby. We have the soccer. We have the golf. We have numerous. Yeah. Which is a great thing to, to say for, for a town like us. We have a great, great uh, facilities. Yeah. And it involves facilities. so many volunteers. Like every club. Every club has volunteers. So many volunteers. Yeah, and it takes a lot to run every club. Yeah. And we're lucky to have such great people to run the club as well. It's one of all the clubs in town. Well, we're here inside Curley's Bar in Clare Street, and uh, normally uh, we'd be having a drink now, but we're, we're not open for business yet. But hopefully, and things will be opened up shortly. We're hoping to be opened, uh, hoping the 19th of July. We're waiting on rulings from government to tell us when we can open. Now, they've told us that we're open la the 5th of July. That didn't happen. They've told us last year we're open. So we just don't know when we're going to. Yeah. I was hoping that'll be the 19th of July. But there's a, a lot of false dawns. Like, I remember when this thing started back, we'll say, March 2020, and we're all thinking this will be over in June or July, and that it was going to be, you know, it must be a, a real test on yourself and all publicans, really, the whole uncertainty of it. It has been tough. It has been tough, I have to say, on publicans. I mean, I have to say, we, were, we have been hit the hardest. The hospitality business has been hit the hardest. They've, you know, as I say, we're open, we're not open, you're open, you're not open. We got open for two weeks in October and then shut down again, and we've been closed ever since. I know. But it has been tough, but we just have to bear, at least everyone is safe, that's the main thing. Yeah. And that's what you want, everyone to be safe. And hopefully we will get rid. This will eventually, with the vaccine and everything, that it it will this it might go away. We might have to live with it, but at least it might be. We are safer with the vaccine. I hope. Yeah. I have to say, I, I'm not a drinking man really myself, but this must be one of the coziest uh, bears in the country. It's just so cozy and so warm and it's nice and small and snug and. It must be like it must be nearly intimate here when when, when you have a few people in. Yeah, it is. It's, it is. It is. It is small, but I mean, it's it's a lovely. I have to say, I'm speaking for myself. It is a lovely, quaint little pub, mm -hmm. but we have a great clientele coming in, both young and we won't say old, middle age. We'll yeah, say. Yeah. But I mean, I have to say, we've been, we have, as I say, we're here since 1927. My grandfather bought this premises in 1927. Uh, my father was here then, he was an only child. My father passed away in 1985. My mother is here since 1956 and she's ran it since. I've taken over. I'm here since, I'm here since my father, right? And hopefully we will see the 100 years, which will be 2027. Tell you, another six years to go. Another six years and we'll, we'll get there. But the other thing I love about it is, you know, you say it's, it's uh, 1927 it was taken over. I'm sure it looked different than today. Oh, like it, it's I mean... As, it's as modern today as, as any bar you Well, go back, go back in my grandfather's time. It's hard to believe it, but there was a grocery shop here. Oh. There was a grocery shop down the corner here. They sold bicycles. They sold televisions. They sold radios. They sold clocks. They sold watches. You name it. They sold it. Come back. Wow. In that time. In, as I said, and this is the side of the premises. But they sold everything. But wasn't that the norm? Like in, in um, it was very common in town. You had a draper shop at a bar in the back. You had a cutlery shop at a bar in the back. Like nearly every every premises very at that time was pub, yeah. grocery, pub, uh, some type of shop. Yeah. Going back to them times. And was there wasn't there a seven day license or you had to have two seven day licenses to make up seven day? Yes, yes. We had uh, as far as I can remember, it, this was a six year license, and then he had to my grandfather bought it. And you'd buy another license to make up a seven day license. Yeah. Going back to them times. Yeah. Now, as I say, he bought this premises for four hundred uh, six hundred pounds wow. in 1927, which wow. was a lot of money. A lot of money at times. And from memory, I think there was, there was an era there when, when there was kind of very little drinking on Sunday and people have to be sneaking into the pub on, on a Sunday and not to be seen and sneaking out yeah, again. Yeah, Sunday, Sunday hours was you'd open at half twelve, you'd close again at two. Two to four. Or uh, some places didn't even open with you. I, I'm you know, going back in our time, it was six o'clock, some evenings we'd open Sundays. Two to six we'd close. But, I mean, culture changed all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for the better. Yeah, yeah. Do you know? Now, pub business has declined a bit. Yeah. 
And I think a lot of that is to do with the driving laws. And then with the smoking ban, kind of, that's kind of hit it as well in ways. Yeah. No, I have, to say it was a, I have to say the smoking ban was a good idea. Yeah. Uh, I know you. people yeah. probably wouldn't agree, but I think that now a lot of people would agree now, yeah. but going back then they didn't agree with it. But it did, it, it has helped. It's been a challenge. I remember even Pat Spillane was on telly one night and he said that we passed through some local village and there was two men outside smoking. There were the only two men that were in the pub, but they were outside, outside smoking. smoking yeah. And like, it was a big culture challenge for us all, really. To it was a serious culture because yeah. every second person that time was smoking. Mm. Everyone. I mean, I say nowadays, I would say, I wouldn't think 95% of the people that come in here are, yeah. are none of them are smoking now. Yeah. It's a really, really big change. But I think it was benefited everybody because uh, non smokers have been uh, oh. crucified nearly Crucif with, with yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. Like a were, smoker didn't mind, but a non smoker A non smoker did yeah. mind. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they did not like the. Yeah. As I say, the fuff. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it, it, is, it, is, it, is, it was a good. Okay, so um, you're going to hold the fort for as long as possible? I'm going to be here. I said the only place you'll see me is going out in the box. <laughs> That's <laughs> the way I leave this place. <laughs> well, of yeah. course, we have the anniversary to look forward to now in six years' time. Six years' time. And, uh, all going well. Hopefully, we'll uh, all be live to see it. All live to see it. Yes, so hopefully that we will live to see it. And, and there's very few, um, I suppose there's a lot of premises on Ballet Hollis maybe, but, but there's very few premises in general that would last, or businesses that would last that long. That long, yeah. There is a few. We have, there is a few around town, all right, but there, as you said, there's very few yeah. that will stick, that would, nowadays. Yeah. Nowadays, I can't see people getting to the 100 nowadays. No. <laughs> 100, 100 years in business now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, it's common enough in town as well that, that uh, second generation does carry on the business. But yeah, it's, often, be, yeah. it's, sorry, it's often maybe in a different premises. It's different premises, yeah. I'd be the third generation here now, yeah. in the, uh, of it now. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a business and I love it. I know, I know. I love the, I love the banter and, and you do get a lot of banter, especially with sport. Yeah, yeah. It's especially one, with yeah. sport, yeah. yeah. Especially with the GAA, if you have the other counties, yeah, yeah. Galway, Roscommon, especially Roscommon, I know. We have yeah, yeah. great banter with them. But I enjoy every bit of it. Yeah. Yeah. But they'd come in for the banter as well. Oh, they'd come in for the banter. Okay. So they're just yeah. as good. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, they're all our friends at the end of the day. Yes. And would you have a different, would there be a different clientele for the rugby, would say the international rugby, and a different clientele for the soccer, and a different clientele for the GA? Or is this mainly GA kind of interest here? It would be... Uh, GA would be the big one. Okay. I have to say the GA would be the biggest draw. Yeah. Draw. Yeah. yeah, I have to say the GA would be, especially when we all playing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and our local club, I have to say, they're 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 great. They're a great yeah. um, support to me as well. Yeah. I have to say. Excellent. But all I have to say, in fairness, I get support <coughs> from all the organisations in town. In fairness, yeah, 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 I do. They do, which is great. Yeah. And we have a good few good organisations. We have. In town. Yeah. The other thing I just have to thinking of now, I remember you used to have a big bottle here. I'm not sure if you still have it or not. Yeah. Um, what, what's that for again? The bottle is for, we. that bottle is going, I would say, for near 40, it could be over 40 years. Right. And we've had it done for all different charities. Okay. Now, the first time the bottle was done, I'm not sure what year, but I think it raised 92 pounds. Wow. Nowadays, we could bring in about uh, 1,500, 1,600 somewhere. Wow. And it wouldn't take a year to fill. Some, like this, some years it's been done maybe nine months. We filled it. Oh. And it's for, as I said, many charities have benefited from it. What, what organisations, for example, just from the top of your head? Uh, Western Care, Cancer Care West, um, Crumlin Hospital. Um, oh, uh, What's the Irish Heart? Was the Heart? The Heart Cree. Yeah, Cree, Cree did. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of the other one. Uh, Alzheimer's. Oh. Western Alzheimer's. I'm glad you remember that one. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. <laughs> yeah, they got that one in here, didn't you? Oh, many, yeah, yeah. Uh, many more have, have benefited from us, which is no, it's horrible. Do you know, it will. We will. <laughs> as soon as we open, we'll have a backup on the counter again. Now. I know, I know. Yeah, but it's a great. It has been a great battle, I have to say. And a kind of, it's not really related, but I mean, it amazes me sometimes how much money is collected in in Ireland in general, and in, like there's there's so many great organisations there, and the the. Um, I don't know where all the money comes from, but people are very generous. The people are, I mean, if you just look at over during this pandemic on a Friday night there on the Late Late Show, the amount of money that was being raised yeah. by all the different organisations. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, people are, people are, are excellent. Yeah. Are excellent when it comes to charity and that, they're okay. excellent, yeah. So look at then, um, 
We might leave it at that on the good note that we're looking forward to the centenary in, in uh, six years' time. Yeah. Uh, I think we've got the right woman for the job here, and I do hope uh, you're allowed to open on the 19th of but July. But have got the 19th of July that will see us open back up and running again. And hopefully we'll have the bottle out. We'll uh, have the bottle on the counter. One bottle out to fill and another one out to empty. <laughs> and uh, good luck with everything in the future. Thanks, Martin. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Adam.